until you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his mercies are over all his works. All your works will give thanks to you, Lord, and your godly ones will bless you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your might. To make known to the sons of mankind your mighty acts and the glory of the majesty of your kingdom, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in his words and holy in all his works.
Hello and welcome to our online service. As you know, we're all at home today because of a province-wide lockdown that is slated to last a month. And if you're confused about what that means uh, for you, well, so are we. Uh, we thought that we could meet this weekend and made plans for that, and then we were led to believe uh, that we couldn't meet. So we thought we would take a, a wait-and-see approach, at least for this Sunday anyways, and to find out if other churches are meetings, to discover what's best for us, and then what was right for us in relation uh, to our community. Uh, right now, we have more uh, questions than we have answers, so we would really appreciate your prayers and your patience as we sort this out. If things do change, we will certainly be in touch uh, with everyone. Today, I want to look at, uh, begin a look at one of my favorite topics in the scriptures. It's a topic that is as grand and majestic and full of beauty as God himself. It's a topic filled with divine purpose and identities for those who will receive it. It amounts to heaven's cutting edge agenda uh, for the world, resulting in liberty and healing and the restoration of all things. Worship, encouragement, instruction, ethics, fellowship all flow uh, from this topic. It's the reason the church exists and it's available to everyone. And it was there at the beginning and it will be there at the end. You can see it enacted in history and eternity will be its full uh, culmination. And it's at the center of all that Jesus taught and lived and promised it's a reality that we are called to share in. It's a reality we're called to share uh, with others. I want to spend at least the next few weeks uh, talking to you about the kingdom of God. Is it really all those things I've just listed? Well, it for surely, it surely is, and so much more. Read rightly, I believe that you find the kingdom theme or statements about the kingdom on every page of the Bible. I also believe that if God had his way, the kingdom would be found in every chapter of our lives as well, that the kingdom would impact every day of our lives. In fact, this is my working definition of the kingdom, and we will unpack it more as we go far further, but as a simple, in a nutshell, uh, what is the kingdom? It's when God gets what he wants. It's the realm of his active goodness in us and for us. You see, we are called to be kingdom people, to live a life with Christ as our king. But what does that look like? What does it mean to have Jesus as the sovereign over our lives? to have Jesus as the one we look to for the life he promised, the life he paid for and prayed for, the life that only he can provide. What does that kind of life look like? What kind of king is Jesus? And what does living is it in his kingdom entail? And if Jesus did get his way in our lives, what would be different what would be the result for us and for others if Jesus was truly king of everything? You all know that in Christ's model prayer for his disciple, he taught them to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heavens, in heaven. So what, what might happen in us and through us if we fully welcomed the reign of God. What might change if Jesus got to be the king over everything, if we fully welcome the reign of God into our corporate lives together and into our personal lives, our work lives, our, our lives of leisure, every aspect of our lives, what would it like to fully welcome the reign 
of God? And that's really the question I want to explore uh, in this series. And that's no small order. So we better start with prayer. Lord, I thank you that you are gracious and compassionate. You are slow to anger and rich in love. Praise you that you are good to all and have compassion on all you have made. We, your saints, extol you and want to tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people everywhere might know of your mighty acts, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. We celebrate that yours is an everlasting reign and your dominion endures through all generation. Lord, this morning we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for keeping all your promises and loving all you have created. Lord, we want you to have your way. We know that it is a, what is that it is perfectly true in heaven, but we want it to be perfectly true on earth as well. We also know that, that for that to be true, you need to start a good work in your people today. This is what we're praying for. Start that good work in us today. So we ask that your kingdom can come and that your will be done in all of our lives. Continue your grace and your compassion toward us, leading us, each one, into your kingdom life. This we pray in the powerful name of Jesus, our King. Amen. Because our King and his kingdom is such a big topic, each week I want to take a different a look at, a, at an aspect, uh, I guess the best way to say that is a look at a different aspect of kingdom teaching that we find in the scriptures and hopefully build each week on that understanding and then think together what our response uh, to this teaching and this truth might be. Today, I want to talk to you about the good news of the kingdom. Why is the kingdom called good news? Well, first, because that's exactly the way Jesus talked about it. Mark's record of Jesus, thought to be one of the earliest of the four records of Christ's life, uh, starts with this statement. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It has a little bit of a in the beginning kind of feel to it, doesn't it? And what was in the beginning as Jesus, the Son of God, began his ministry? Well, there was the gospel. That word uh, means good news. It's the word evangel. It's, it's where we get the word evangelist or, or evangelism or even further away uh, where we get evangelicalism, uh, a, a tradition within the Christian faith with which Grace Church is, is a part of. And what is the uh, good news, or what is this evangel that Jesus came to bring? Mark tells us straight away. Mark 1, 14 and 15 says, After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. And what's the good news of God? The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. So what's the good news? It's that the kingdom has come near. The dynamic rule of God's active goodness has arrived in the world. And it has arrived particularly in the person of Jesus Christ. Here, Jesus is both the evangel and the evangelizer. He is both the good news and the announcer of the good news. This word evangel was common in Jesus' day. It was used to announce the arrival of an emperor or a king. It was used to announce the, a victory in battle or the coming of a new age. 
And because we know the rest of the story, this word applies to Jesus and is used by Jesus in quite appropriate ways. He really is the good news. His rule is present with him, and his coming means victory for God and for God's people. It means liberty. It means wholeness. It means that the world had been ushered into a brand new age, an age of love and grace of God. So central was this message to the kingdom that Jesus says it was the reason that he was sent to the earth. Now, there's a number of sayings in the in the gospel where Jesus says, this is the reason I came, but this is definitely one of them. He came to announce this good news. In Luke 4, Jesus is garnering attention uh, because of the healing and deliverance that, that comes with the kingdom, and that's another topic we'll tackle one day. But he's garnering attention because of this, and the people are trying to dictate to him what he should be doing. But, but his father has other plans for him. After Jesus is replenished in a time of prayer, he tells this to the crowd. I must preach the good news of the kingdom to other towns. In other words, I can't just stay here with you guys because that is why I was sent. So according to Jesus, why was he sent? What was his mission? To preach, to announce, to declare the good news that God through Jesus will get what he wants. This is his active goodness at, that is at work in the world to restore it, to heal it, to bring it back to the place that it, God, God always intended for the world. I don't think I need to argue that the world is hardly what God intended it, but the work of grace and love and restoring it has begun in the person of of Jesus. He came to undo what was wrong and make it right. And again, we'll explore that further in another message. His whole ministry was proof of his power to restore and renew. And, uh, and it was there in what Jesus taught in his words. It was there in what Jesus did, his deeds. Who he, who he was, it was there also in his character. All, all of that pointed to the loving rule of his father, whose desire it was to set all things right. And it happens through his kingdom rule. I think it's quite telling that after his work on the cross, and we just uh, uh, wrapped up the, the Easter uh, season, after his work on the cross and the resurrection, the Bible tells us that Jesus hung around for 40 days before his ascension. Well, what did he do in that 40 days of time? Acts 1 tells us. Luke is writing this, and he says this. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he showed himself to those men and gave convincing proof that he was alive. We talked about one of those last week in, in his meeting with Thomas and the disciples. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days. And what did he speak of? He spoke about the kingdom of God. Isn't that interesting? that Jesus begins the gospel by announcing the, the, the ministry of the kingdom. And here at the end of his life, at the end of his earthly ministry, rather, uh, he is there speaking about the kingdom of God. And that clear emphasis on the kingdom is apparently passed on to his followers as well. This comes in the preaching of, of Philip and, it's, and Paul. You can see it on this, your screen. And that's how the book of Acts ends as well. Paul is said to be boldly and without hindrance preaching the kingdom of God and telling about the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can see the gospel starts with Christ announcing the kingdom as good news. He ends his ministry on earth still talking about the kingdom. 
It's picked up by the first preachers as their evangel, their good news, and then the biblical story of the church anyways, which is the book of Acts, ends on this very note. Without a doubt, the kingdom of God is central to a true understanding of what God is up to in this world. And if you don't believe me, believe the emphasis Jesus places on the kingdom when he says this, and this is the gospel of the kingdom that will be preached in the, in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come, Matthew 24, 14. What's Jesus saying? He's saying that right up to the very last moment of this present age, the gospel, the good news of the gospel will be present in the world. And only when its work is done will the end come. Until that day comes, the good news is still in effect. It still needs to be shared. It's the good news of the kingdom. So why is there so much weight on the kingdom? Well, simply, it's, it represents God's best plan for every one of us, that we would become kingdom people, that we would be a sign and an instrument and a foretaste, like I talked about a couple weeks ago, of this coming age when God gets exactly what he wants. When that which is true in heaven is also true in earth. This, at that time, that is when the kingdom will have fully come. But it's already began in Jesus. It began in him. It's been carried on all these years. And the kingdom is still working in the world today. And it will continue to work until this age is done. And then Jesus says the end will come. What is true in heaven, God wants it to be true on earth. But how do we access this reality? Where do we begin our journey in the kingdom? Well, Jesus tells us back at the beginning of Mark's gospel, he says, repent and believe the good news. Repent means really to change your mind, to turn around. To, you're going in one direction, you're thinking in one direction, you're feeling in one direction, you're responding in one direction, and you do a complete 180, and you go in a different direction, a, a direction in which God would have you to walk your life. Repentance means to give a thought about your thinking. What are you thinking today? What are you thinking as you look at this world, and particularly right now, this pandemic. What are you thinking? Is this spell the end? Is this the, uh, a disaster that we can't uh, move out of? Is this uh, mean nothing but misery in the future? But if we turn that thinking around and thought about it, maybe it is that, and I believe it is, it's God's opportunity to do something wonderful, to call people back to himself. I want to repent of any turn from, think about what I'm thinking and turn around any sort of thought that is discouraging, any sort of thought that would imply that God is not in control, that he's not have your best interest in mind, that he's not actually working out your salvation as you work out your salvation in fear and tremble. I want to turn from that. What about your relationships? Are you looking at your relationships as a in a in a in a skewed way, in a way that doesn't provide hope for reconciliation? What about your your marriage? What about your sons and your daughters? What about your relationship with other family members? Do you see just doom and gloom? Do you see a hopeless mess? It may be a mess right now. But to invite the kingdom into that, to repent from that kind of thinking and responding is to turn from that and to believe the hope that Jesus has for us, the power that he has to restore and renew and heal. That's what Jesus is asking us to do. The world is full of doom and gloom, 
But he has come to restore and to renew. He has come to overcome the world. And in fact, this Easter weekend has just shown us the power of his ability to overcome, to turn death back into life. Where is death in your life right now? He wants to bring that to life. But we need to turn from those thoughts. We need to turn from those beliefs and that doubt that is crippling. As I said last week, it's fine to doubt, but you can't stay there. You must move out of faith, uh, out of uh, doubt into faith. You must move out of Saturday and uh, Friday and Saturday and move into Sunday, the resurrection life. The, the kingdom of God has come, and it is continuing to come, and it provides hope. Jesus is inviting us to, to think again and think new, anew about our situations and not be despaired, but that, behold, I am making all things new. Or what about your job? Maybe you're thinking it's dead end, that it's, there's no point to it, that it's just drudgery and misery. God wants to turn that thinking around. He wants you to invite him into your workspace so that you can be all that you can be. You can be a witness to the kingdom. And if you're feeling drudgery and doom, there's no doubt other people are around you that are feeling the exact same thing. Don't they need hope? Don't they need a word that sustains them in this season? You might be the very person. You're the kingdom person there, and you can minister hope and healing and strength to them. And so we need to start by repenting of all these ways of responding. Turn around and think about the way we're thinking about our life right now and to invite his rule. Imagine what your life would be like if God got his way in every situation. That might be scary to some of you, but I tell you, it means life everlasting and not in the, he not in the far, far away, but in the here and now. You can live a kingdom life with kingdom faith and kingdom authority and kingdom power and kingdom healing and kingdom restoration. There is so much good news for us in the kingdom. Jesus announced it, he completed it, and now he's working within history to bring it about. You're an agent of that hope and that healing for this world. I hope that you will take this invitation of good news, that you would hear it and you would celebrate it and welcome it into your life as a kingdom person. Behold, Jesus says to you today, I'm making all things new and I'm starting with your heart. I'm starting with your faith. I'm starting with your response to me. Be kingdom people today. Step into the kingdom. Walk in the kingdom. There is nothing but good fruit in the kingdom for you. Nothing but good, good great blessing for all the things that you think are, are, are struggling, you're struggling with today. There can be a dramatic turnaround. They themselves can turn 180 and be going in a direction. Our God is a great God. The kingdom celebrates the fact that our God reigns. Is he reigning in your life today? Do you know him as Lord and Savior? You can commit yourself to the, to the king and accept him as your king. And allow him to rule in new and fresh ways. Thanks so much for being with us today. Let me close in prayer. And uh, hopefully we'll have some answers about what's happening next week. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the kingdom reality. Thank you for Jesus Christ, the, the good news. He's not only the good news, but he came announcing that good news. And I pray that that word of good news would be spoken over every person that is listening to me today. I pray, Lord, that their hearts would be enlivened, that they would be open up, to open their hearts up to what you're saying in this season. That yes, it looks dark out there on many fronts, and the, uh, on many fronts, but Lord, you are doing something new. You're bringing restoration and healing. Help us to have hope for it. Help us to believe for it, to receive the kingdom today and begin walking in its fullness. Lord, give us grace to unpack all these things in ways that keep Jesus Christ as the center of our lives. Lord, we don't want to get ahead of you. We don't want to lag behind. We want to be kingdom people in step with our king, receiving his good grace over our lives and, and celebrating his sovereign rule 
in every aspect of our lives. May it be so, Lord. May it be so that that which is true in heaven would also be true on earth for us today. We'll thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Again, thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for uh, tuning in, and we will, um, we will meet again uh, soon, somewhere. God bless. Like one.